uh hello guys good morning here <clears throat> it is true early i got up just to celebrate with you the philosophy day uh 16 november <clears throat> so uh congrats and happy uh philosophy day this is uh, a very important day uh because uh, i didn't know even myself that uh, on thursday third thursday of november unesco they celebrate this day so philosophy is uh, a very important subject as well as it is very important for life so why not we celebrate uh, this day uh with a lot of pomp and show in a sense that we become philosophers at least for one day in our life so if we become uh, philosophers and it doesn't mean that if we study philosophy or philosophy is our subject so then we need philosophy we also lead uh, need philosophy to lead our lives because without philosophy the life will be without knowledge without wisdom without analysis and philosophical approach that is very much important uh that is highly important because if you don't have philosophical approach so you can't know what is reality what is truth uh what is knowledge what is ethics what is good what is bad what is virtue what is evil so all these questions we study in philosophy and some people consider that philosophy is a dry subject and philosophy is not like an important subject so it is highly important <clears throat> if you want to lead a life which is a conscious life for a conscious life for a mindful life for a meaningful life we need philosophy so do you have any problem with the voice uh are you not listening to me or what happened okay so if you listen to me altaf ji so please uh write it if there is any problem so i'll continue okay so altaf ji says check the voice so okay thank you adil shah all of you uh, happy uh, philosophy day once again and i am here for like 30 minutes so i will discuss with you uh, why philosophy and why each of each one of us we need philosophy so if we go in details and we understand that what is philosophy then we can utilize philosophy in our life so this is you know the etymology of philosophy is quite clear now everybody knows that philosophy is from philos and sophia but do we know what is love <clears throat> and what is wisdom because originally philosophy means love for wisdom or love of wisdom so these three words love are are of and wisdom this is called philosophical approach that we become analytical we become conscious we become mindful we become sensitive we try to understand the meaning and definition of words this is called philosophy this is philosophical approach that when a topic is given to us do we really understand meaning and definition of each and every word of the topic this is called philosophical approach do we really understand so for example love for wisdom or love of wisdom so there are three words let's become philosophical here our philosophical approach and ask ourselves 
do we know what is love and do we know what is wisdom so if we have our own concept <clears throat> like socrates he is the uh, real founder of philosophy although there were philosophers before socrates but they were called sophist because there were people like humor humor would uh, narrate stories and he would be spreading wisdom through stories through narrations but then sophists came and they would uh, discuss wisdom and the practical knowledge so that was sophist and then socrates came and then he made uh, philosophy uh, like a real subject and now today we are celebrating philosophy day because of unesco uh, because it is the enduring value of philosophy enduring means that for the last 2500 years we have not forgotten philosophy there is always philosophy uh, in any part of the world if you go to any country you will find a philosopher i don't know about muslims because there was a, a big big clash between philosophers who were mutazilites and another group who was asharites so there was a big uh, clash between asharites and mutazilites so all the philosophers that we know like ibn sina and ibn al hasyam and al farabi uh, al ghazali was like uh, in between philosopher or religious person so there was a big clash between philosophers and other uh, muslims that's why philosophy dwindled philosophy had a big decline in the muslim world that's why in the whole uh, country of pakistan of 220 million i personally don't know any philosopher except iqbal and he was also confused that was he a philosopher or he was a poet or he was a religious person he was a sufi or what was he although great people even in philosophy we use intuitionism we use intuition like the direct experience the spiritual experience is also uh, like kant and some of the uh, philosophers they take uh, intuition or spirituality also part of philosophy and science is also part of uh, philosophy because philosophy is the science of sciences philosophy is the knowledge of knowledge philosophy is wisdom philosophy is rationality philosophy is empiricism empiricism means that we believe in em empirical approach experimental approach once we don't experiment once we don't do something practically then that knowledge is not valid so this is called empiricism like spirituality that is experience there is a difference between experiment and experience experience is when we uh, you know the things happen to us that is called experience and when we do something when we ha make happen things then that is called experiment so <clears throat> there is a difference between experience and experiment science is more experiment while spirituality that is more experience the things happen to you you create the environment you open your mind you open your soul and the things come to you and when you uh, make things happen that is called science and <clears throat> there is another uh, approach which is a religious approach so a religious approach is more uh, based on revelation that god talks to a prophet and then the prophet talks to people and then la reba fihi there is no doubt while philosophy starts with doubt there is a big contrast between religion and philosophy so that's why the religious people they will discourage philosophers they will talk against philosophy even iqbal he himself is a philosopher but i i i, I don't think that i remember that words are not that falsafi ko khuda ki duri nahi milti something like that i forgot the wording uh, that if you want to discover god so you can't discover it through uh, philosophy so warda bashir you are the uh, admin of this group and you came late so happy philosophy day uh, i was talking that we don't have philosophers in the muslim world and we don't have philosophers in pakistan maybe 
you are uh, one of the women philosophers that we have in Pakistan. You have done your uh, studies in philosophy. So congrats. This is your day. This is our day. Each and every person is a philosopher. Ghani Khan was uh, a Pashtun philosopher. Uh, and that's why Mullah was always against him. And he was against Mullah. So there is a big contrast uh, between uh, religion and philosophy. Because philosophy starts with doubt. Philosophy starts with questioning. You ask questions. You question everything. And the same questions you are asking for the last 2500 years. Until today, you have not got answer. Because philosophy is more concerned with questions. Asking why? Why this? Why that? They are not more concerned with uh, answers. Although uh, there is one branch of philosophy that is called logic. In logic, we try to answer things and how we answer things when we have valid arguments. Okay. When we have valid arguments. So when we have valid arguments, then that is called, uh, you can post anything here in this, uh, uh, my uh, discussion with you. If you want to celebrate the philosophy day, so please you can post anything here, Warda Bashir or anybody. If you have uh, uh, anything to celebrate this day with me, so uh, speak, write something as comment, which will become the part of this, uh, uh, this uh, my broadcasting or my talking to you live. So when you write something there, it will become part of this uh, post. So let us have a conversation also along that I'm speaking. You can write something. So it will become part of this uh, day, celebration of this day. So Bulle Shah was uh, a poet and he was a spiritual Sufi uh, kind of person. As I told you that everyone among us is philosopher. Some people take philosophy as a profession, as a passion. Okay, and they go for love and wisdom and they go for uh, rationality. So then they become a professional like everyone. For example, if you have a headache, so you go and you buy a paracetamol. So it doesn't mean that you are a doctor. Okay. And for example, you need uh, you are a physicist, but you have not studied physics. If you know the laws of Newton and you apply some physics, you turn on your bulb, your light. Are you turn it off and you create current or you do some uh, simple physics experiment. So it doesn't mean that you become a physicist. So uh, bullish I heard philosophy because there was deep, uh, you know, meaning in his uh, like Ghani Khan, Rahman Baba, bullish Shah, Sachal Sarmast, Shah Abdul Latif Bithai. These people were, they were not professional philosophers, but they had philosophy. Uh, uh, deep philosophy in their uh, approach. Okay, a post to Warda Shah, don't ask. You are a philosopher, Warda Bashir. Whatever you have, post it. Don't ask. Because philosophers, they ask questions and they do actions. Uh, they don't ask a time and again. They are followers because we are all followers of Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. They are the giants, uh, the giants of philosophy, the great Greeks. But we don't become dependent on others. The philosophers are, they are independent minded people. They don't care. They do things uh, what they want. That's why uh, in the modern world, again, there is a revival of philosophy. The people are becoming again conscious of philosophy because philosophy makes you analytical. Philosophy makes you critical. You become critical thinking. That's why UNESCO is celebrating today's day not for the speculative philosophy because there are two kinds of philosophy. One is speculative philosophy and ontology metaphysics in which they go in detail and they, uh, you know, will discuss God, will discuss truth, will discuss reality and uh, they will discuss like theological uh, things. So sometimes a common person doesn't understand that kind of philosophy. While for a common person, which philosophy is important? That is critical thinking. That is analytical approach. That is philosophical approach. That how we become critical and analytical. For example, the word philosophy is made up two words, philos and sophia. Philos means love 
and Sophia means wisdom. So do we know what is love? Because Socrates would be asking people, do you know uh, what is <clears throat> Asabiya Varda Bashir, you are a philosopher, so don't ask me unphilosophical questions. Asabiya is more sociology, that is not philosophy. Ibn Khaldun was more uh, sociologist and he was not a philosopher in that sense. So Asabiya, this uh, tribal or family or, uh, you know, the tribal sense that the people, they, uh, the interconnectedness, like Pashtuns, they will favor Pashtuns and Punjabis will favor Punjabis, Arabs will favor Arabs. This was Asabiya. So this is more sociology. He was a sociologist. Ibn Khaldun was the founder of sociology. So let us focus on philosophy. Don't confuse things. One subject with another subject. Religion is based on revelation, prophet. No doubts. There is no doubt. You can't ask questions. You have to accept what it is. Okay. So there is no philosophy in the religion. In science, you use your senses and experiment. In spirituality, you use uh, mysticism. You use your direct experiences. You are in, uh, and there is another uh, subject that is philosophy, which we are discussing. Intellect, mind, thinking. Okay, thinking. So be focused. A philosopher is always focused. A philosopher knows where the where he is or she is and what he does, why he or she does things. That is called uh, philosophy. So what is love, for example? I'm asking you a question. What is love? When we say the philosophy is the love of wisdom, so what is love? So if we know, okay, if we don't know, so we go to Wikipedia or internet and we ask, what is love? That's why philosopher does not take things for granted. Philosopher does not take things as it is. Philosopher will go in detail. Philosopher will go in definitions. Uh, according to Socrates, what is philosophy? Philosophy is to asking definitions, definitions of things, to define things, abstract and concrete. If the thing is this laptop is concrete, so I must ask what is laptop? What is table? What is bed? What is window? What is a room? how a room is different from house. So this gives you clarity of mind. And once you are clear in your mind, you are a philosopher. People think that philosophers are confused people. They are not confused. They are confused because if all of us are black and there is one white, so that white is rare. As all of us are not philosophers, so when there is one philosopher among us, so we consider that that person is uh, kind of uh, rare or strange. That's why we consider that philosophy is something which is not useful. Philosopher, philosophy is very, very uh, useful. Philosophy is, uh, you know, very much relevant. And if you want to enjoy life, and if you want to really enjoy truth, reality, knowledge, God, even if you want to enjoy God, your connection with God, then you have to be a philosopher. So you must be a philosopher. And now uh, Varda Shah is, Varda Bashir is struck, struck there. You know, you are, you are a stoic, stoic, stoicism. I love this philosophy and why philosophy is important because philosophy gives you lessons of life. You become so strong that the other people don't affect you. I told Warda Bashir <coughs> that Ibn Khaldun or Asabiya is not a philosophy. And now she's stuck there. Come out of that. Listen to me now. Be intelligent. Live in the moment. Right now. If you think that uh, Ibn Khaldun was a historian and he was a philosopher, so forget about that because Asabiya is not a uh, philosophy. Now come, strike means when I always repeatedly use strike. So if you want to become philosopher, be stoics, stoicism, stoicism, Zeno, Zeno, Zeno was the founder of uh, stoicism and a ship was sunk and he was saved and people asked him, oh, the, the ship was sunk and what happened and this and that. The people were like, you know, alarming situation and they were a lot of panic 
and there were you know a lot of fear you read Zeno uh, in uh, Google and you will find him he's the founder of uh, stoicism and you don't know what matter I'm okay am I right he was like calm tranquility serenity philosophy gives you calm philosophy gives you happiness you become so strong from inside that the outside does not affect you this is called stoicism okay a small thing you know a small wave in your ocean does not affect you you are so strong that nothing happens to you you are emotional you love people you have passion you have sentiments but you are uh, you know so much uh, you have so much strength from inside being a stoic that the outside world does not uh, affect you and why it does not affect you because you differentiate between in internal and external what thing is in your control and what is beyond your control so the thing which are beyond your control that thing does not bother you like what is what trump is doing in the united states it doesn't bother you you sleep sound sleep at night because trump is not for you why you should bother about trump you should be bother about your family about your studies about your examination where you are the thing which are under your control you will have you would have never seen me talking about the local politics what happened that mqm is now merged with another mqm or not or what happened to nawaz sharif or what happened to imran khan and what did and who won the by elections and who these are just small events you are more concerned about the big ship of your life your life what you are doing what happens to you and what you make happen this is called stoicism your sphere of influence where is your impression up to what up to which extent you uh, reach where you arrive where is your path where is your way where is your destination you don't bother about things which are not relevant to you so okay Farooq Durrani, I already uh, uh, talked about Ghani Khan. He was a great philosopher. We will discuss about him in Pashto uh, group also. Uh, I don't think that he was a professional philosopher. He studied philosophy, and, but he depicted his philosophy in poetry. So today we are talking about a philosopher, the philosophy, philosophy, which is uh, like philosopher. If a person studies philosophy uh, and then he becomes philosopher, he was against Mullah and Mullah was against him. So that was one of the proof because religion can't tolerate philosophy. Philosophy gives you a lot of freedom. You become so free. You ask any question. Asking questions is philosophy. And Ghani Khan was asking questions. And then he was trying to answer those questions. That's why Ghani Khan was a great, great philosopher and a great poet. <clears throat> so for students, when you want to become Tabinda Ali, uh, for any student of philosophy, the helpful thing is that you become you ask questions. For example, you ask questions about philosophy. That, that what is philosophy? Okay, representative realism is a political philosophy. This we will discuss in political science. Let me uh, def define this uh, uh, philosophy first. That what is philosophy? So love and wisdom. This is the etymological meaning of philosophy do you know what is love so muhammad Qureshi says that according to me love is when you have sense to feel others plain if you can't then it means you are senseless apathetic and indifferent very good your your definition of love this is called philosophy that you define things and then you ask questions and then other ask you questions and then logically you draw a conclusion and this whole process is called philosophical approach, philosophical process. So love, if we open uh, Wikipedia, so love tells what is love. Love is a variety of different emotional and mental states, typically strongly and positively experienced that range from deepest interpersonal affection to simple pleasure. Okay deepest interpersonal affection to simple pleasure this is the definition of love okay 
you you have interpersonal between persons affection and are simple pleasure you draw pleasure so these are the limits of love because definition the definition of definition is to provide limits limits to uh, a thing where from this thing starts and where it ends this is called definition so the definition of love is deepest interpersonal affection to simple pleasure an example of this range of meanings is that the love of a mother differs from the love of a spouse differs from the love of food like food you love food you love your mother you love your spouse all these are loves so this is the range of love most commonly love refers to a feeling of strong attraction and personal attachment okay strong affection and personal attachment that is called love love can also be a virtue representing human kindness compassion and affection the unselfish loyal and benevolent concern for the good of another this is what qureshi was saying mohammad asad qureshi you are a true follower huh? you are a true friend right from the beginning that i started my facebook lectures and he's there and i see you as csp so a feeling of strong affection and personal attachment love can also be a virtue representing human kindness compassion and affection the unselfish loyal and benevolent concern for the good of another now for example my love may be concerned for you that 26000 people they apply and why 300 are selected so this is my concern my worry why this thing happens so this kindness this compassion you can call it love it may also describe compassionate and affectionate actions towards other humans one self or animals love is not only for uh, others it is also for you yourself i love myself when it becomes a disease then it is called narcissism this is another discussion and love for animals you also love animals you love plants you love stones you love anything any part of the nature ancient greek philosophers identified four forms of love there are four forms of love essentially familial love in greek they call it stort friendly love philia romantic love eros and divine love agape there are four uh, kinds of love familial love friendly love romantic love divine love in greek the greek philosophers they have greek words for it which is storge philia eros and agape modern authors have distinguished further varieties of love infatuated love self love and courtly love non western traditions have also distinguished variants of or symbols of these states love has additional religious or spiritual meaning so you know now love we can go in detail about love what is love so today uh, my focus is on the etymology of philosophy if we understand this etymology the origin of the word philosophy then we can understand philosophy and we can become philosophers now uh what is the other part of the etymology or the word philosophy that is sophia philosophy philos that was love and now we go to the second part and that is wisdom what is wisdom varda bashir just to know what is good for your soul path or happiness exactly varda bashir exact very good definition altaf ji love is the first step of psycho because you choose one person and sacrifice all of your belonging for him so altaf ji improve your language you are a css uh, candidate and you are appearing in uh, next year so please psycho psycho has a p you cannot write psycho without p and because you choose 
C H O S E. This is the second form, and the first form is C H O O S E. Choose, choose, and choose one person and sacrifice all of your belonging for him. This is a very rough kind of language, Altafji. Please improve your language, your writing style. Participate more in my live discussions so I can improve your language. With this language, you cannot do CSS. A very rough and you know ugly kind of language. You choose one person and sacrifice all of your belonging for him. What is him? Belonging for him, sacrifice, belonging. You spend all of your wealth. <laughs> this we are not talking about the love which is for a girl, and you are buying a lot of gifts and gifts, and then you destroy yourself and you don't have any more money. And you then spend your uh, money and then you sell your house and everything just to please her. Don't please her. This is you are buying love. Okay, don't buy love. Love is not bought. Okay, that's why when you go uh, to a prostitute, so that is called love making. You do love, but you you don't. She doesn't love you, and you don't love her. So if you try to uh buy love with gifts and spending money so that is not love that is just business that is a deal that's why in our society the people when they go for marriage so they will be asking the family and uh, you know the jahez and dowry and this and that so that is a business that is not love okay we people are hypocrites generally there is a lot of hypocrisy in our society even the spouse relationship that is also business in west these people are so true they are so you know uh, honest people that if a girl or a boy they don't love each other they will not spend a single day together okay in a, especially in bed you are adult people so i'm talking to you a little uh, adult language so they will not go to bed if they don't love each other and that's why they will take time there will be you know one month they will you will invite that person then you will sit together they will travel together and you will be sleeping in the same room but uh you will be not doing love there will be no sex and then a time will come that they will start kissing and then they will love each other then that is romantic love a, a rose otherwise you you will see them like with the very a uh, few uh, clothes very uh, you can see the bodies even you go to a beach all of them are half naked but you can't touch you can't do anything you can't buy you can't tell them okay i'll give you 1 million dollars and can you sleep with me no impossible if there is no love so that is the concept of love here okay <clears throat> now come to the <clears throat> second part of the uh, philosophy which is wisdom one was love and the other is wisdom what is the synonym okay muhammad asad qureshi defined wisdom wisdom is thinking deep on anything which we want to explore not at all totally wrong thinking deep that is not uh, wisdom uh, muhammad qureshi wisdom is the application of thinking you can say when you think and then you apply in your real life then that is called wisdom Okay, so Farooq Durani, I have no proper access to internet. I dedicated you to Pashto lines. Okay, thank you, Durani. Sumra Badam. Okay, thank you, Shahzad Ali Meman. You must have access to internet. Nowadays, internet is like water, like food. You can't do without internet. If you want to do CSS, please, internet is must. Don't spend money on buying books. Just have some good connection by internet and you will know you will no need to do uh, to buy any book so wisdom if we go to wikipedia so wikipedia tells us okay my concept of wisdom is that a wise person is that person who applies knowledge or information in solving problems and that person who is far sighted far sighted means that the person who looks beyond things behind the wall so that is called uh wisdom okay we we look at you know immediately short-sightedness 
okay far sightedness is that when you look beyond things and then you know what will be the consequences that is called wisdom so wisdom is the application of thinking exactly sayyid rasul the rapper so wisdom are sapiens another word for wisdom is sapiens homo sapiens when we say sapiens s a p i e n s e that is called sapiens s a p i e n c e wisdom are sapiens is the ability to think and act using knowledge experience understanding common sense and insight look at this beautiful definition in wikipedia what is wisdom the ability to think and act using knowledge experience understanding common sense and insight there appears to be consensus that wisdom is associated with attributes such as compassion experiential uh, experiment experiential self knowledge non attachment and virtues such as ethics and benevolence wisdom has been defined in many different ways a variety of measurement scales have been developed and several sub types of wisdom have been proposed out of these phonesis and sophia are two key sub types of wisdom phonesis refers to practical knowledge are the seeking of knowledge to apply to the given circumstances such as an understanding of people objects events situations and the willingness as well as the ability to apply perception judgment and action in keeping with the understanding of what is the optimal course of action sophia on the other hand refers to transcendent wisdom are the ultimate nature of reality so we have here two parts of wisdom in this definition this i'm taking from uh, wikipedia you can go to wikipedia just type wisdom and this is the description of wisdom in wikipedia so one is phronesis and the other is sophia so phronesis that is the practical aspect of wisdom when we concentrate on the practical aspects that is called phronesis and when we go beyond beyond is transcendental transcendental the people who foresee things that is called wisdom beyond we go in detail of things so that is called uh wisdom so when we study philosophy we become wise okay we get wisdom love for wisdom not only we become wise but we love wisdom okay we are such people that when we lead our lives so we uh live that life with wise uh, approach not with a stupid foolish approach we don't destroy our life we don't spend our energies in things which are not useful we understand that what is the importance of a thing the significance of a thing where should i spend my time where should i spend my energy where should i spend my money then you become a wise person and then you become a philosopher so we understand that philosophy is not an easy subject but this is a very interesting subject that's why today we are celebrating philosophy day and philosophy day started by unesco because of the enduring value of philosophy 2500 years and still we know how philosophy is important in the developing countries in countries like pakistan you will not see philosophy very popular because the people are more entangled the people are more stuck where they are stuck in roti kapda makan they are stuck in animal rights pakistan jaise mulk mein aapko falsafe isliye nahi milte ki wahan log jo hai wo roti kapde makan mein lage hue hai unko animal rights ye janwar ke hukuk hai khana aur kahi rehna aur 
کوئی مکان یہ جانور کے حقوق ہیں تو ہمارا جو فوکس ہے وہ بہت چھوٹا ہے ہم بس کہتے کہ بھائی کچھ جاب مل جائے بس شادی کرے بچے ہو جائے بس ایک دن مر جائے تو یہ ہماری زندگی کا مقصد ہے اس وجہ سے پاکستان جیسے ملک میں پوری مسلم دنیا میں آپ کو اس لیے فلاسفر نہیں ملتے کہ وہاں لوگوں کے پاس وزڈم نالج ایکسپیرینس ریشنلٹی عقل عقل کا استعمال وہ ان کو فضول لگتا ہے کہ چھوڑو یار یہ کیا بکواس ہے اس کا کوئی فائدہ نہیں ہے میں کیوں کروں ان چیزوں کو اس وجہ سے جو مذہب ہے مذہب کا اتنا زیادہ کنٹرول ہے ہر بندہ وہ مذہبی ہے اور آپ دیکھیں نا وہ کیا کیا لوگ نہیں کر رہے مذہب کے نام پہ تو اور آپ مذہب کے خلاف ایک بات نہیں کر سکتے اب مذہب کے خلاف بات نہیں کرنی چاہیے لیکن بھائی فلاسفی بھی تو ایک چیز ہے کہ ہم ایک چیز کو کویشچن تو کرے اس کے آنسر جو اس کا جواب ہے وہ ڈھونڈنے کی کوشش کرے تو آج جو میرا آپ لوگوں کا مقصد ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ ہم جتنا مذہب کے ساتھ ہم محبت کرتے ہیں جتنا سائنس آہستہ آہستہ ہماری اس میں آ رہا ہے سوسائٹی میں اور یہ جو اسپرچولٹی ہے یا انٹیوشن ہے وہ جو ہمارے پاس ہے تو اسی طرح فلاسفی بھی ہونی چاہیے میرا اپنا اپروچ یہ ہے کہ ریئلٹی حقیقت اور علم نالج کے لیے ہمارے پاس چار راستے ہیں سائنس جو حواس کو یوز کرتا ہے فلاسفی جو عقل کو یوز کرتا ہے مذہب وہی کو اور اسپرچولٹی انٹیوشن یہ چار راستے جو ہے یہ ان میں تضاد نہیں ہونا چاہیے ہر یہ چار راستے جو ہے یہ پیرل ہے یہ کلیش نہیں کرنا چاہیے اس کو یہ پیرل ہے یہ کٹے جا رہے ہیں اور ان کا جو مقصد ہے وہ ایک ہے وہ ہے ریئلٹی وہ ہے ٹروتھ وہ ہے ہیپینس تو اگر آپ خوش رہنا چاہتے ہیں اور آپ زندگی کوئی فائدہ لینا چاہتے ہیں خود اپنے ساتھ مخلص ہونا چاہتے ہیں کسی اور کے ساتھ مخلص ہونا چاہتے ہیں تو آپ کے لیے فلاسفی کی بھی بہت زیادہ ضرورت ہے سو وی آر سیلیبریٹنگ فلاسفی اف یو ہیو اینی کویشچن سو پلیز آسک آئی ایم جسٹ آئی ہیو ٹو منٹس مور دس از ارلی مارننگ ہیئر آئی گاٹ اپ ٹو ڈے ٹو سیلیبریٹ ود یو ٹو دا ود دس فلاسفی ود نعیم خان گروپ دا فلاسفی ڈے Uh, I don't see your Edmund. I don't know where is he. And uh, Warda was there. She is also the Edmund of philosophy group. I want to make this group like a, a great group. Philosophical approach is very much important that you ask for definitions of words and terms. When you ask the definition, then it becomes term. Okay, like love is a common word. Wisdom is a common word. But in philosophy, these become terms. And then we must understand the definitions of these terms. Like your concept of, you know, the way that the philosophical approach is that you think about a word, a term. For example, there is an essay topic. So you just think over it, your concept, and then open Wikipedia or Google and go and see the definition of that word and then compare your understanding with the definition which is given in Wikipedia. So that is uh, the philosophical approach that you go in detail, you go for definitions, you ask questions. Okay. Ontology is the branch of philosophy or metaphysics in which we try to understand the reality of reality, the reality of existence. The reality of God, because this is my third lecture in philosophy. If you listen to my other two lectures, so there uh, you will, uh, I have defined are the branches of philosophy. When we, philosophy, the, the first branch of philosophy, that is metaphysics. Metaphysics is beyond physics, beyond matter. And then we study God, because God is not matter. In ontology, we study the reality and we study the existence, that what is existence and what not is existence. And another branch of philosophy is epistemology. Epistemology in that we study knowledge. What is knowledge? What are the sources of knowledge? How to know knowledge? The knowledge of knowledge. The reality of reality, that is ontology. While the knowledge of knowledge, that is epistemology. And then we come to the uh, value theory that what is good and what is bad, what is evil and what is virtue. So then we have ethics there, 
we have uh, aesthetics. Aesthetics is also a branch of philosophy in which we study beauty. What is beauty? What thing is beautiful? What thing is ugly? So that's why the liberal arts, if you study the liberal arts, uh, go to Wikipedia and study liberal arts. That's why we need philosophy for liberal arts also. That is aesthetics. What is what thing is artistic? What thing is not artistic? Value of art. So that we study in the value theory and then logic, which I already defined that which gives you uh, valid reasoning, argumentation. OK, you become like uh, uh, you become, you know, so clear, clarity of mind. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, so automatically A is equal to C. This is called logic. And we have in, intuitionistic knowledge, a logic. So intuition, some philosophers, they believe in intuition, although intuition is not rational approach. That is not rationality. So intuitional logic is which is based on intuition, the direct experience. That is called intuitional logic. So it is, uh, I'm getting late from my office. Thank you very much. All the best. And uh, we will continue discussing philosophy.